everybody. Hope you all are doing well. And welcome back to Michael's Matters. And as you all may suspect by now, I am Michael. And today, as we inch day by day closer to the deadline for 2022 taxes, uh, which, by the way, is going to be due by April 18th, 2023 for most folks, or May 15th uh, for those folks who are affected by natural disasters. So if you live here in California or maybe Alabama or a couple other states across the country that have natural disasters, they are going to extend those deadlines. But anyways, as we get closer to that deadline, if you had health insurance through a federal health exchange, so somewhere like an Obamacare or healthcare.gov, or here in California, as it's called, Covered California, you're going to have to fill out a form 8962, which is super duper important as a form because it is the form that will look at your income that you made in 2022 and then compare that to how much help you got during the year to help you pay for your health insurance plan. And then finally figure out if you are right on the money, then it's a wash. But if you made more money, you may have to owe some back. Or if you made less money, you might even get a bigger tax return than you anticipated. So today we are talking about how to fill out your 8962 form for your 2022 taxes. Now, before we get to the video, if you like these videos, if you find them interesting, if you find them helpful, or hey, if you find them useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, it really does help the channel to grow and you get notifications when our newest and most informative videos become available. For right, now, let's get down to the video. All right, so I want to start this next portion of the video off by saying first, this is not tax advice. Uh, and second, I am not a tax person, <laughs> but I guess I am rather a taxed person. <laughs> waka waka. Anyways, if you do have questions about your specific tax situation, talk to a tax person. This time of year, they are literally everywhere. And again, if you are mid to low income, meaning you have incomes below $60,000 a year, you can use a program like the VITA program, V-I-T-A program, um, that helps you to get your taxes done for free and in person, uh, oftentimes at your local library or community center or school or a public place like that in your town or city. Now let's talk about what is the form 8962 and who needs to fill it out. The 8962 form is a form that the IRS uses to reconcile your advance payment of premium of tax credit or APTC that you get to help you pay for your health insurance plan. When you apply for a health plan through a health exchange, again, like an Obamacare or healthcare.gov or covered CA here in California, the main role of the exchange is to try to help you to get health insurance that is quote unquote affordable. Now, obviously affordable is a pretty loaded word and there is a specific calculation for what that affordable uh, level is. It's designed by the Fed, but essentially what the exchange does is it looks at four criteria, your household, how many people in your household, uh, your age, the income, as well as the location that you live. And then based on those four things, it sets a price that should be, again, quote unquote, affordable for your family to pay monthly for their health insurance. So exchanges, they don't actually do any of the insurance thing, right? They don't provide insurance coverage. They just pay private insurance plans like a Blue Shield or a Kaiser or a Molina or Humana or any of those other private health insurance companies. It pays them to do it for them. So for example, if you choose a plan by Blue Shield uh, and the monthly cost was $1,000, then the exchange may look at those four criteria, age, income, household size, and location, and say, you know what, $500 is affordable for your family. So then the exchange would pay Blue Shield $500 a month. You would pay Blue Shield $500 a month. And then Blue Shield would get $1,000 total for uh, your health insurance plan. So it's pretty straightforward. The issue that a lot of people get caught up on for this is the income. Because out of those four biggest criteria, the age, income, household size, and location, income tends to be the most unpredictable, especially in the last year, um, where if you made more money, uh, but didn't update the exchange, and you still took that $500 a month to help you pay for your health insurance plan, then it could be that based on your higher income that you found out at the end of the year, you maybe should have only got $250 a month worth of help and rather have paid $750 for your health insurance plan. Or inversely, if you made less money and you didn't report that, then maybe you should have got $750 worth of help rather than $500 every month um, and you should have only been paying $250 yourself for that health plan. It figures out how much money you got to pay your monthly premiums how much you should have gotten, and then based off your actual income by the end of 2022, it's out how much money either you have to pay back to get that justified, or pay nothing if it's totally correct, or in fact, you might get some money, more money, in fact, back on your return if you paid 
too much. So again, it gets a little complicated and really the biggest problem is that who knows what their income is going to be 12 months in advance. Unless you are a super duper fastidious manager of your own money, knowing exactly how much income you will have made by December 31st on January 1st is, you know, next to impossible. So that is what the 8962 form does. Now let's talk about how to fill it out. All right, so we will start with the easiest portion of this whole form, which is your name. So that'll go at the very top. And then the second easiest uh, portion of the whole form is your social security number. So that'll go right next to it. All right, now we're cooking. Now under A, it mentions that you cannot take any PTC or get any extra help if you filed your taxes, married, filed separately, unless you qualify for specific exemptions, which are in the instructions. And by the way, uh, I have the instructions up here, but I will also put them in the comments just in case you wanna follow along on those ones as well. Um, but in this example, since this person is just a single person, um, then it won't apply. Also, well, another form that you're gonna need for this is the 1095A that you get from the exchange, which I'll throw right here. And again, this is just for one person. Now let's move on to part one. So this is where it's going to figure out through a number of calculations, what you should have been your monthly premium assistance for 2022 based on your actual income from your 1040 this year. So line one, uh, you're gonna put the size of your family. Now in this case, again, with the uh, example, it's just one person who's also named person number one. So we're gonna put a one there. 2A is where we figure out what is the modified adjusted gross income because for the purposes of APDC, advanced premium tax credit or help to help pay for your health plan, uh, the exchange will look at income that is part of your adjusted gross income, your AGI, will also include some income that is not typically included in there, something like tax exempt interest. And that creates the modified adjusted gross income. But in this case, uh, we don't have any of those kind of other modifiers other than AGI. Um, so we are just gonna put the income here that we are using for this example at $35,000 for person number one. Part two B is for dependents income, but since uh, it's just one person, um, there are no dependents. And for line three, we add 2A and 2B together, and that makes $35,000. Now, of course, if you have dependents, you can add their income in there as well. On to line four. First, check the box about where you live, primarily because this is super important, is because Alaska and Hawaii are really, really, really expensive places to live and have a different calculator for their federal poverty lines. But for the majority of Americans, like us here in California, uh, we live in the contiguous 48 states. So we will check the box for the 48 states. Also, by the way, important note is that the poverty level will affect how much APTC you should have gotten during the year. Now, we'll look at the table on the instructions uh, for where we live. So we'll scroll there. And if you look here, you can see that the federal poverty line for the lower 48 states uh, for a family of one is listed at $12,880. So that is the poverty line. If you make $12,881, you are not poor, at least according to the government. And if you make $12,879, according to the government, then you are poor. That 12880 that's where we're gonna put on line number four. Next up for line five, we're gonna figure out based on the household size and income, what is this person's income with relation to the federal poverty level? So in the instructions, it tells us to enter the amount from line three onto line one. So that would be put uh, 35,000. And then on line two in the instructions, put the amount from line four, uh, which is on the 8962, which is 12,880. As per the instructions for line four, then we multiply the number by four, which gives us $51,520. So that is 400% of the federal poverty level. It asks, is this more than the amount that is on line one? And yes, it is. And now uh, it says to divide the amount from line one by the amount on line two. So that is $35,000 divided by 12,880 which gives us 2.71739130434782. <laughs> it then says to multiply that by uh, 100 and drop off any numbers after the decimal point, which gives us 271. And that is what goes on line number five of the 8962 form. So essentially what this is saying is that at $35,000 a year, this person is at 271% of the federal poverty line. All right, so line seven, we need to find what is the applicable 
figure. So let's see the instructions here uh, where we need to put on line seven, the decimal from the table that applies to the amount we entered on line five. So 271 comes out to be 0 0.0484. So put that on line seven, Whew, look pretty easy. Line 8A, it says to multiply line three by line seven. So that would mean $35,000 times that decimal point we just looked up, 0 0.0484. Now it comes 1,694, which goes on line 8A. And then for line 8B, I guess we need to figure what that is monthly. So we divide that by 12. Uh, so 1694 divided by 12 equals 141 rounded to the nearest whole dollar. So 141 dollars. Moving along to part two, line nine is asking if we are allocating policy amounts with another taxpayer. Um, in this case, again, person one, uh, unfortunately is just person one. Maybe one day he'll get a person two, but at the moment it's just person one. Uh, so there is not uh, anyone else to be allocating that on. So we'll move on to line 10. So line 10, so this is asking if we had coverage all year long or not. And in the case that we did, uh, which we did in this case, so we will check the box for yes and move along to line 11. And this is primarily just because uh, the numbers every month are exactly the same as they had coverage the entire year you know, for each month. And uh, so we can use the yearly calculation rather than the monthly calculation. But if someone did have a gap in coverage or maybe they changed their plan or their income increased and so they got different uh, APTs throughout the year, then you would need to go uh, through all the lines, 12 through 23, and add them up and add them up all together to make a yearly amount, um, which, uh, which is what you would use. But in this case, it's all the same, so we're just gonna use these uh, amounts at uh, from our 1095A in these boxes. All right, so we look at our 1095A form, and this is, again, what you would get from the exchange. So you don't make this form. This one is sent out to you from your exchange, um, and it looks like uh, like this. And so for line A, we will take the info from line 33A on the 1095A, which is $4,630.32. So put that in there. For line B, we will put the number for the annual amount of the SLCSP from the 1095A, which stands for the second lowest cost silver plan. Again, it comes from the 1095A, uh, and that is on line 33B, uh, and that is $5,000. $401.92. Then in 11C, it asks for the annual contribution amount, which is what we got on line 8A. So that is $1,694. And for 11B, uh, we'll subtract 11C from 11B, which gives us $3,707.92. So put that one in there. And then for 11E, it says to put the smaller of 11A or 11D. Uh, so D is smaller, and we'll put that one in, $3,707.92. And last, for 11F, we will put in numbers from 33C on the 1095A, which is at $3,362.16. So with that done, it means that we can skip uh, lines 12 through 23, because again, we use the annual amounts and go right to line 24, uh, which is asking for the amount from 11E or $3,707.92. And then for line 25, we add the amount from 11F, which is $3,362.16. At this point, it's asking if line 24 is greater than line 25, which it is. So it's instructing us to subtract 25 from 24, which comes out to $345.76. So in this case, this fictitious person, person number one, will be getting $345.76 back because based on his income, he actually didn't get enough premium assistance throughout the year or APTC. Um, and so they are justifying that with him at the end of the year based off his actual income uh, rather than what he had estimated. But if it had been reversed and his income was actually higher, um, then basically they would just need to continue through these last three steps, 27, 28, and 29. And that number would end up coming out to show how much money uh, he would need to pay back or she or they would have to pay back um, if they had made more money. 
All right, so that was our walkthrough from the tax form 8962. And this is uh, kind of a follow-up video to our video we did earlier of our 1095 form. So 1095A, 1095B, and 1095C. So if you're not really sure what to do with the 1095 form that you got or the multiple forms that you got, check out that one as well. I'll put a link up to the video here. Um, and uh, ultimately, you know what? If you found this video interesting, if you found it helpful, or hey, you know, if you at least found it useful, please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, it really does help our channel to grow and you get notifications when our newest and most informative videos come out. So for Michael's Niners, I hope that uh, you all take care of yourself. Take care of others. Have a happy, healthy,